Welcome to Reality NSFW coverage of the Challenge All Stars 3, Episode 3. I'm Johnny Fairplay. That's Lauren Pratt. And some of you might be looking at the screen going, I don't remember him from the challenge. And you won't. <laughs> Why? That's Peter Davis, nominee for Best Music Supervision for Reality Television by the Guild of Music Supervisors. What does that mean? Pete's the guy that picks all the badass music for the Challenge All-Stars. We've talked about him almost every episode. Why? Because Pete, you fucking kill it. Pete Davis, oh, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, long time listener, first time uh, guest. Um, <laughs> thank you for getting me through those paperwork days. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my, my, every, my end of my week, I, I, I do my paperwork and I listen to you guys. So, well, it is no secret we love you here, but we are not alone. The, the actual challenge participants, they love you, and the challenge fandom as a whole are so appreciative for the work that you do. It, it's incredible. So, well, and thank- honestly, the, the feeling is mutual. Without, without the cast, I would have, where'd my inspiration be? You know, they, they are the inspiration for, for everything we do on the show, and, and we just have such a, I mean, it's called All Stars for a reason. We have an All Star cast. They're just incredible. There's a reason why they've been favorites for so long and you know we love we love being inspired by them and and you know our incredibly like fanatical fan base you know you guys you all mean the world to us too you know we wouldn't be here if not for all of you so thank you all right so we're going to talk a little behind the scenes not too much and if you're wondering if we have spoilers as you've if you've ever listened to the podcast i know no spoilers lauren knows no spoilers because it ruins the show and uh and if I make these great predictions that are epically wrong, it makes it so much more entertaining for you. Not for me, but for, for you, the, the viewer. But little known fact, peek behind the curtain. Pete does the, uh, the, uh, the musical arrangement for all these episodes literally 25 minutes before each episode. So he, he, he gets it Wednesday morning at I mean, 6.30 that's why I'm a.m. So winded right now, and that's why, right? <laughs> Six, 5.30 a.m., he gets it, goes live at, at 6. So I do... I. Rumor and innuendo, and please correct me if I'm wrong, there was an episode that aired five minutes late because you uh, you were just slacking. Is that? <laughs> you know, we all we all do our best. Uh, what, can I say? what can I say? You know, five minutes in the grand scheme of things, what is that even? I mean, really, who's, a, who's awake at, other than uh, Tommy yeah. Trina? Who's other, awake? Other than, <laughs> other than actually everyone, it seems. From, from what I see online, you know, many people have... Are, are losing copious amounts of sleep to stay up for all stars. And, you know, I'm here for that. So I don't even, what time, do you know what time it drops? Does it drop at midnight or does it drop in the morning? I think or? it's midnight except for when it's 1227 and sometimes 1130. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I believe it's midnight on Wednesday. Is, okay. Uh, is the well, I don't, I don't think taking notes when at, at midnight on Wednesday mm-hmm. would help this podcast. So I'm glad I, I watch in the morning before, you know, after uh, two cups of coffee. Well, and isn't isn't that just the greatest thing about about streaming? Is is you know, I mean, granted, you have to avoid spoilers if you do this, but if you're a morning person, you can do it after your morning run. And when you're when you're making your your muesli and yogurt, you can you can go. I'm going to pop up small stars and, and live my best my best yoga life. And if you're a night owl, you can you can come home after night at the bars and and go like I'm going to live my best. Uh, pick your favorite lush from the show life. <laughs> So, so well, speaking of lushes, uh, Alex Trias is not with us. Uh, he sends his regrets. Um, and uh, he was with me this uh, this past Wednesday night at Bolero Snort Brewery for the release of Juicy Fair Play IPA. We had a survivor okay. viewing party. It was incredible. Everyone that was advertised showed up, plus a surprise guest. Can't say who it is. You, uh, if you check my social media um next thursday i will be posting a picture of that surprise guest and uh, so this is a live and learn moment because i uh was late better late than never on uh the first episode where you had a yes on and you were talking about it i was walking down into uh into hollywood yesterday and i found out that you have your own beer i'm a huge beer guy no well this is this is the uh this is the juicy fair play tropical ipa it's a uh, pineapple it's coconut Coconut lime vanilla milk sugar juicy ipa oh Oh, 
So. I already have a headache for uh, tomorrow from from that, but it sounds so delicious. <laughs> yes. So and, and so as a result, that was Wednesday night. Drove back, uh, however many hours yesterday. Zane Knight was supposed to be my driver. He, of course, is throwing up in my back seat into a sweatshirt. So that was a blast. Uh, mm-hmm. Got home at eleven thirty. Was not on social media because I was driving the entire time. And then this morning, I'm just like, oh, let me check the Instagram. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 I can't look at Instagram because apparently all I follow is. Uh, people from the challenge <laughs> so, so yes so I, I made it i made it through this episode spoiler free and uh speaking of the episode previously on the challenge brad comes out of the water but there's something in the water and i believe it's nehemiah but it was really quick so i'm not sure <laughs> i i can confirm neither confirm nor deny i <laughs> I, I mean, I, yes, I scored this yesterday. I scored this four hours ago. Yes. Uh, no, but, um, it, you know, honestly, in the grand scheme, it's like, yeah, who was in the water? And a lot of them were in the water. <laughs> yes. W- was, was there not enough time to get Jaws for that for that uh, uh, four seconds uh, previously on? <laughs> you know, I, uh, I, loved me, I loved me a good Jaws reference the, uh, the first and fourth time I did it. But sometimes you got to do something new, you know? Okay. okay. I, I will say... I, I don't believe there's been a single episode that I have not had a record to hold up. And, and I'm going through. All right. Today, what, you, what you got this time? <laughs> I'm going through today. We'll get there. <laughs> I'm going through and I'm just like, oh, boy, Pete, you're making it hard. And I'm and, and something happens. And I go, you know what he should play right here? And you do. <laughs> then it comes on. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I have witnesses. So like, like it is literally typed. I'm just like, Pete. And then I'm just like, oh, Pete, of course. Well, I mean, <laughs> why, why would I think any different? We'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, but yes. I'm betting it's it's the one that I'm thinking of, too. I'm, I'm sure it is. So, uh, um, Mark, oh, my God. I'm so scared. Mark. Uh, oh, no. You, you, you got one, too. You got one, too. <laughs> Mark, Mark high fives his wrestling buddy, much like I high five my wrestling buddy every morning that I wake up. Mine, unlike Mark's, uh, does have the hole in the back. Um, but uh, yeah, they're uh, <laughs> they're very fun to have your own wrestling buddy. <laughs> Why is this uh, what I need it for today? Like, just, I'm not never, never shocks me. <laughs> Uh, fun fact: We actually uh, we decided with um, with Mini Mark, um, we came up with a, a suite of a few different uh, kind of specialty cues that have kind of like a little bit of a, a Balkan sort of vibe to them. Uh, we were just like, you know what, you know what, Mini Mark needs he needs his own kind of like theme suite. Oh, so wow. uh, you know, so, something to look out for. But we uh, we 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 made sure Mini Mark got his uh, got his due. Mark Mark is uh, Mini Mark is the Shan of uh, of the Challenge All Stars Three. <laughs> he really is the Shan, isn't he? <laughs> well, hopefully, he doesn't ruin the Ponderosa. All right, oh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> we are going there today. Yes. Uh, next, we get a, a little. Ro- was you you break out the deep cuts every now and then? Was not expecting a Robin uh, uh, cut on today's episode, but we so got Show Me is- Love. <laughs> I, I need to preface this by saying that that getting to work on on three seasons of the show has been just an absolute dream job for me as someone who grew up on a very healthy diet of Rick D's weekly top 40. Ah. Uh, so uh, when, you know, Robin had her resurgence, I mean, I think at this point now it's like eight years ago and she's still kicking ass. I was just like, oh, this is good, but it's, but it's not show me love. Uh, and so, you know, like, having the opportunity to put that on was, was awesome. Just cause like, that was one of my, like my jams from, from growing up in the nineties. And, and it was just like bringing it back with like, you know, the greatest and first Robin song. I, I, uh, when I lived in Los Angeles, I, I actually lived, uh, I, I, I eventually lived in Los Angeles, uh, uh West Hollywood, the, the top of Fuller by the, by the gates to Runyon Canyon. The, the- oh yeah. The, the, uh, the right there, right down that way, actually. Yeah, the, the pinnacle apartments right by the, you know, those, the, mm-hmm. the last yeah. apartments on the, on the right. And, yep. but prior to that, I lived in Venice Beach, 21 Thornton Avenue, I believe. And, uh, it was the last apartments right before the beach. And on, on that same road, uh, the, the ladies man, Tim Meadows, he, he mm-hmm. was my neighbor. Yeah. And apartment building and the beach was the, the Kiss FM beach house. Where okay. I think Rick Dees did the top he forty did his thing, yeah. Yes. <laughs> if he didn't do it from there, he, he might, might have done it from the studio in Sherman Oaks, but did like the the things there. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, uh, so I grew up um, overseas actually in a military base, and uh, we had like one American station, and so essentially what they chose to play at that time was what we got to listen to, and so four hours every Saturday it was counting down the uh, the hits with Rick Dees and and trying to figure out the algorithm. <laughs> oh, there you go. And and uh, it, and and did you think Disco Duck every time you heard him? Uh, you know, I did. Uh, actually, because also on the military station, but much later at night, was Dr. Demento. And I would listen to that every week, and he would play Disco Duck. Ah, there you go. So a little, little bit of crossover there. Full, full um, circle. But, yeah. So, uh, so during, uh, I believe this is during Show Me Love, we learned that Kendall and Kellyanne are very flexible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was wild. <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> like, I just wasn't prepared for that. Yeah. I don't know if uh, Kendall hates me. I know the other one does, so it's okay. Uh, <laughs> next, <laughs> we, the and for, peek behind the curtain. Huge fan of both of them. So sorry, uh, sorry, one of you doesn't like me. It's I, okay. I just I, the reference of the other one doesn't like it's just what you <laughs> went with. They didn't even get a name. You just went with the other one. I stopped saying their name when they. Uh, 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 that's a that's a that, that's a season one callback. You got. <laughs> so. So uh, next we learn of the Treehouse Alliance, and uh, the Treehouse Alliance uh, is composed of Kayla, Sylvia, Jimmy, Veronica, Tina, Ronnie, and Derek. And somehow and Derek. One even, of them, even he's not sure. One of them has gas. <laughs> <laughs> I signed an NDA. I, sorry. I, yeah, if, so if, you dig it, if you dig it, if you're digging for the who's who on the gas here, you won't find it. Me. That's fine because I, I'm I'm willing to put uh, Lord on the spot here. Uh, who's your money on? Oh, freaking Derek it has to be. Oh, uh, I'm going Veronica. Oh, well, <laughs> no, you know. Know. no, it's I'm pretty sure it's Derek. <laughs> are, you, are you are you you guys are you, you know what if Mini Mark was spying on him? Who knows? Oh, oh, that's a good reference there. Yeah, yeah. he doesn't have the hole in the back, so it would it would be a, a tight fit coming out. So. <laughs> Oh my God! There we go. We we got some love from the chat. OMG, the legendary Pete Davis. The music on this Thank show, you, since season one, has been amazing. Andrea Thank S, so much with the love for Pete. Pete, we got nothing but love. Like we might not get it in, in the live comments, but when I checked the uh, the 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 comments afterwards for telling me everything that I said wrong this episode, they will also <laughs> say that Pete rocks. Oh, I mean, it really means a lot. Thank you, Andrea. Appreciate it. So um, next we see Nehemiah, and he has lost his, his one and two. He has lost LT and Melinda, and he is scared to be open about his West Alliance. And, uh, and I understand that, but at the same time, I don't feel that he's too secretive later on in the episode about that alliance. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I think it was kind of a, everyone knew that before it even happened. Just, you know, they were same season. They're, they've been buds for ages, you know, yeah. like... <laughs> Well, that, that's what I, I, I've never, I guess maybe, maybe, maybe where he's coming from is like, let me not rub it in, you know, I, like, let's not be obnoxious about it. I, I don't know. But, but it, it's like uh last season with, uh, Nel, was it Nelson and his partner? He ran the final or the, I, I can't remember her name, but it was just, you know, it was like, they're from the same, they're both from Oakland or whatever the, the area they were from the same. And it was just like, you know, I'm not going to tell people that they're not going to know we're working together. Oh, oh, you're talking about Darrell and, uh, and Janelle. Janelle. Yeah. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, yeah. They're, and he's like, I'm not going to tell anybody. Bay area, Bay area. Yeah, uh, yeah. he's like, I'm not going to yeah. tell anybody. They're not going to know. We're going to have the secret thing. And everyone we on the podcast, they're just like, yeah. Everyone knows yeah. that they they're both from from Oakland, or <laughs> yeah. and, and and that yeah. they hang out. <laughs> Here, here's here's the thing: is you know, you're de- you're dealing with people who you know, our youngest cast member is is 29, and our oldest is 52. These are people who are grown adults who are, have been very successful in life and careers, and they're not dumb like you know you can try to pull the wool on their eyes but they're not fresh young eyed you know like this is my first competition show what i do these people are, are pros and, yeah. and you, know, they're you can't all, pull the wool over their eyes <laughs> and they're all on social media and have seen pics of you with whoever you happen to be front i mean like right i have seen a hundred pictures of nehemiah and wes so it's it's like they're not taking pictures together because they're better enemies <laughs> right. right there's no point of hiding it if everyone already knows about it just yeah. roll with each other and it's no big deal because yeah. everyone has it's... everyone in there has connections with people the long history that they all have with each other it doesn't freaking matter you're gonna know a bunch of people that are in there no matter what 
Yeah. So, I mean, like there, there's the numbers are going to fall however they fall. Like if you have more friends, you have more numbers. If you have less friends, you have less numbers. I mean, like, like, you know, one of my arch enemies on Survivor is, is Sandra Diaz Twine. You know, I, I don't know. The there's queen, probably the queen is the queen. The, the, there's probably 15 pictures of her at my at my last uh, my last viewing party in Durham. So so she came to my party because she hates me, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, so uh, Andrew asked Pete, "Do you do the music for the main show too?" No, no I do not. We um, I have uh, two amazing colleagues who have done the last few seasons of that, and uh, I mean, truthfully, they were they were my inspiration going into this because they just do such an incredible job, and week in week out. And so when I started doing you know All Stars, it was like, okay, I have to like live up to what they do because honestly, like, like they kick ass. Um, but no, that's that's all them. They're you know they all power to them for what they've done on the main show. Can, can I put them on the spot? Because this is kind of avo- avoids any responsibility on your end. Are you ready? I, <laughs> Potentially. I prefer if you didn't. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, 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 a, it's a fun okay. <laughs> so are you familiar with the tattoo challenge fan, Tommy Traina? The guy, he has the uh, tattoo. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I, 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 there, is, there is a guy in Reddit who frequently posts every time he gets a new challenger. Yes, tattooed. Yes. Okay, that's, yeah. Tommy, that's Tommy that's Traina. Tommy. He has a band called don't bite your tongue this is a cd and he has three songs well he has many songs but he's three songs that he feels are perfect for the challenge not all stars but for the actual challenge okay well if they were to make it your way would they make it would it would they make it their way uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always happy to pass, listen to anything, pass anything on. You no, know, no, no. I, just, Tom, I can't, Tom, I can't was, go further than that. But, no, no, that's um, fine. So Tom, yeah, Tommy and, was at the, uh, and I'm the, sure when they, when they watch this later, they'll be like, Oh, what is, what are we getting? <laughs> yes. They, 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 what are we getting? <laughs> so, so no, uh, Tommy was at the viewing party, uh, uh, Wednesday night and afterwards we were hanging out and he was just like, uh, he goes, you're talking to the music guy. <laughs> I'm like, I am. And he was like, that's so cool. Like I, yeah. we, we, we love, and he was like, which, yeah, he goes, I have nothing for him. And he goes, but. <laughs> Which, uh, just a, a fun corollary on this, um, we have a couple mutual friends in common. Uh, speaking of music and challenge, uh, the band All Good Things. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, admittedly, I, you know, I need to actually get back in touch with them. It's been a bit because they've been a little busy, you know, kicking ass and, you know, and doing that. Um, but long ago, um, uh, I had uh used some of their prior band's music in uh real world and and uh challenge back in my coordinator days um the band say no more drive through classic and uh good night sunrise uh was dan was dan's band oh wow yeah so this right here i don't know if you can see <laughs> is the remainder of a joint <laughs> that i smoked with uh with all good things and um oh who's the band uh oh. Is it Papa Roach? I think it's Papa. Yeah, I think that, it was, that looks like that looks like a Papa Roach. I, I think I think it was the the Roach from Papa Roach. I I, I uh, yeah. Th- this was from Blue Ridge Rock Fest, so it's uh it's not to be smoked. It's a it's a it's a it's, it's a cherished it cherished item. It's, it's a relic. It's a relic. It is. So, but yeah, <laughs> that's my souvenir. I have. I yeah. I could have kept the ticket stub, and I'm just like, no, this is pretty. This, you know, this is in the height of COVID. It's perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, all right. Uh, oh, quick question um, from Chris D. Uh, what was Pete's favorite musical moment you scored on All Stars? That's like, oh, that's like choosing choosing between children. Yeah, um, I can always been, answer that. <laughs> all right, there have been, there have been many, but uh, I would say the first big one that stands out to me um, was. Uh, uh, one of the first, actually, there there were quite a few in in season one, but um, the uh, Wilson Phillips hold on moment, uh, the height, the ropes above of water, yep. where where John A is, you know what, I'm back, I'm doing this, I I just had my second kid and I didn't know what to expect, but holy crap, I'm kicking ass, and uh, the editor uh, who worked on that um, is just he's a, he's just always a delight to work with because he just has these ideas that are like insane and so we decided with that we wanted to because it, we had the mountains in the background we wanted to kind of do one for one with you know the song and like the music video of the song with what we had 
visually for the challenge. So we even oh, had wow. the, the soft dissolves and the birds flying and the mountains. And then we have the chorus kicking in. And then I believe that was Kendall makes it across and snaps John A's rope and she falls in the water and we just drop out with her. Wow. Uh, and that, I mean, that was great. And um, uh, also in episode three, the, uh, the ice block challenge, that editor is another one who has some fantastic ideas and he took shimmy shimmy and when uh, I want to say it was Anissa pushing Big Easy on it, uh, did a, a DJ move, and we hit that in right on the like. Uh, so those those are a couple of my my early favorites. Um, last season's finale, uh, this is one I meticulously worked on. Uh, Andrea True's more more more, going into in the gross eating challenge. I, I've never met me a gross eating challenge I don't love. By the way, I, oh I yeah, love that shit. Andrea True is more, more, more going into a wind down and a wind back up into Lens Steal My Sunshine, but Lens Steal My Sunshine samples Andrea True's more, more, more. A uh, yeah. little, little bit of a technical one that uh, that we got to play around with and uh, and work with, and I always love doing things like that. And then, um, yeah, I mean, I, I I was a huge champion of of Republicans ready to go, and uh, uh, we decided to kind of do a, a fake out this season with a. Oh, we're giving you the, the epic orchestral version, you know, like this is the sad movie trailer, blah, blah, blah. Oh my God, everyone's going to die. Just kidding. You get the regular song too. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so those are, those are a few of them in particular that really, you know, stand out to me. And of course, Boston, Boston at the end of, uh, of season one, I, I just love that band. And, and of course, new, new radicals, you get what you get. You get. I, like I said, it's really hard to choose. Um, but those are, those are a few of my favorites. So my, my, um, my, and oh, and who can forget Save the Palace, of course. Yeah, Save, save the Palace. I mean, te Tech is just Tech's amazing, and you know it was wonderful getting to work with him and and to make that happen. Uh, so, did he come to to your studios, or did was that no. out, all? I mean, he's, he's, he just he's, it? like he's he's got so much initiative and drive, and he basically reached out and said, "Hey, by the way, um, I turned our thing into a song. Here it is." Oh wow! And we were just like. Oh, this is good. Um, we have an idea. <laughs> wow. Uh, you know, he, he just did it on his own and sent it over and said, hey, I did this. And we're like, you want to maybe have it in the show? And he was like, oh, yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. My, my biggest pop of any season thus far was uh, Ooh by De La Soul. Mm, that, that was a good one. And, yeah. you know, like I said, I like I told you, I, I had already been – you know, I had eyes on that one for a while and it was just finding the right place. And when you mentioned it, it was like, oh, well, great minds think alike. <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Uh, so next um, we see uh, MJ and John A are close, Lauren. Does that not surprise you? I mean, uh, they were together last season. They did just win, so I would hope so. But you never know. People can come in with a rival that we never know about. Something can happen. It could be shifty. Yeah, they're close. So uh, they, are, they are thinking that working with Wes isn't the worst idea, but is it a deal with the devil? <laughs> I feel like it always is with Wes. I feel it like really it. seriously is. I mean, we've seen Wes go pretty far in most of the seasons that he's competed in, but some of them he goes early and he's really good with the political game. He seriously is. He always tends to go with um, newer people, but everyone on this season has played before because they're all stars. So he has to kind They've of- They've all been in a final. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. So yeah. he normally picks up the rookies. There's no rookies here this time. So he has to really figure out how he's going to maneuver the game. Yeah, so- uh... So it's, next, it's interesting in this that the rookies are actually the 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 OG of the OGs are really kind of the rookies when it comes down to it because it's been so long. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yes, wants a talky date with Wes, and um, how how would you say this went, Lauren? <laughs> I, from a scale uh, to one to ten, I would say yeah. I'm just gonna give it a two point five. Yeah, this seems like a lot of my first dates. I, uh... <laughs> okay, but would it would it have been as good good to watch if it went well? Uh, no, 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 no. It, it no. was absolutely perfect. So we uh, we learned that Wes is gonna eat or gonna bake, eat, and shit out. Yes, and then we learned that Yes has no tolerance for Wes's shit, which works out because it's Wait, be Yes. That's like the snake eating its own tail. Actually, it how does that? It it is so, is but. That, we, 
transitive property, that would mean that he has no tolerance for himself. I, I, I'm, I'm just that, that could easily be a possibility. So, for the record, I love them both. I mean, oh. I, I'm tighter with yes, but uh, what I got no favorite kid in this fight. I, I like, I love look, this is the battle I never knew I needed, and I am for it. I don't want it to end anytime soon because, like, when 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 yes potentially goes in against MJ, I'm just like, holy shit! Like, are you ruining this already? Like, stop! I mean, <laughs> I'm rooting for both of you. I mean, like, I understand your enemies. I get that. I'm for that. But please, string that. It's like a Ghost Island. You like, we had the whole build up between Dominic and and Chris Noble, and it's just like this is the season. It's it's Chris's army versus Dominic's army. What's gonna mm-hmm. happen? They they have the merge. Chris goes home, and I'm like, wait. What are you, you going to yep. do with the rest of your season? <laughs> like, right. It's like, where do we go from here? <laughs> yeah. Like, you, you literally set up your season based on this, and it's one and done. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I I, I feel like I would have edited it different. Just me. So. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So, uh, yeah. So, that was a horrible date. Um, uh, so, it's time for the uh, our, our uh, challenge, and it is playing dirty. And uh, in playing dirty, you grab a ball in a mud pit, and guess what, folks? There's not enough balls. And <laughs> <laughs> surprise. <laughs> yes. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, essentially as I mean, it's, it's a class. You know, this is a classic. This yeah. one just never. You know, we just change the location of the mud pit, and it, it works well every single time. Yes, as CJ explains, it's essentially musical chairs, and he is correct. And. Uh, Guess what, folks? Uh, you get to sabotage someone if you won the uh, the previous challenge. And that would be yes. And if he's going to sabotage anyone, it's going to be Wes. <laughs> so, uh, Q, uh, um, Wes's uh, Wes's new tank top, uh, a ni- a Wes's nice new tank top, uh, courtesy of Veronica, uh, from yes to Wes, thirty five pound vest. And uh, so now it's Kendall's turn to give out a sabotage. And she goes, hey, I have a question. Can I use this on a guy? And TJ's like, yeah, of course. <laughs> Fuck them over. I, I don't care. Like, I, I want to see someone fucked up. So, you know, yeah. like, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm sure. For so TJ, long as somebody gets it, it's not my problem. Yeah. So, you know, and, and I'm sure, you know, like. I've putting it on a guy was not the worst move so uh so then she goes wait a second can i put it on me and he goes uh yeah but can i just throw out a little reminder uh in case you forgot uh you're playing for half a million dollars so why would you put the vest on you and i'm like there you go and jordan's like hey i'm over here volunteering just you know do not there we go andrea s says it right here kendall is so unintentionally messy and god bless her because i don't think she's trying to be messy I don't think so either. I just so, think like I mean, like she's like she's, she's like I'm, I'm I'm trying to play a mature game here. I'm not trying to get in the drama. I'm not like I'm trying to stay out of everything. I'm asking every question possible that that will will not leave blood on my hands. And it's just like mm, okay, what would put the most blood on my hands right now? Oh, MJ, let's go that way. <laughs> well, and that's that's the great thing about All Stars is is people aren't necessarily playing the the way you play on on you know, survivor right, or a mothership challenge, you know, they're, they've got their own way of doing it. And I, I, there's no wrong way of playing the game. Ultimately, you know, maybe that strategy was making sense to her. And yeah, well, I, I think she would do that in a regular challenge. Not, like, I, I don't think she's, she's awful. Like, I think she's, she's, she's trying to play nice. Yeah. And she was just like, she goes, okay, who's the guy with the biggest muscles that 35 pounds would affect right, the least? Right, who's going to affect the least? You yeah. know, like, I, I can understand how, yeah. how that, that was working. It's like, yeah, this will affect, you know, the, the biggest guy the least. Let's just make it an equalizer. Um, and, you know, she wasn't necessarily thinking, like, wait, this is one of my numbers. Yes. Yeah. So, no, I, I, I'm with, like, I completely understand it. I mean, like, when someone, however, when someone volunteers, that's right. that's there's your easy out <laughs> no it, it isn't easy out because you can literally say you volunteered for this sorry if you came in last place you still said you asked for it yeah yeah right you know? there's no there's no blood with a volunteer mm-hmm. so and it Absolutely. was there so and i oh. don't honestly it maybe helps jordan not uh, be less butterfingers if uh <laughs> if he has the best <laughs> maybe the best is sticky in some way so or 
maybe, as Andrea says, maybe she knows uh, MJ was mean to Fair Play in Nashville. <laughs> I, I try to be nice about this whole MJ situation. And I have reached out and I heard nothing back. So I could say fuck MJ right now, but I'm not. I'm still going to say, no, I'm still going to play nice. MJ, we need to chat. Because once again, I feel like I probably, if I had to guess, because my girlfriend was just like, uh, he was like, you know that guy? I'm like, yeah, he choke slammed me on his carport uh, in Nashville. And she was like, ooh, like, uh, what did you do? And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. why do you follow that? With, I would have said the same thing, though. What why why you would do? you say that? I don't know. I've hung out with you before, so I'm just saying. <laughs> I've hung out with you before. Pete, Pete asked me the same thing off the air. It's a, it's a, it's a recurring theme. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes. So, uh, Derek explains that this is the Mud Bowl Classic of the... Championship of the world. World. Yeah. Uh, Derek, <laughs> improv is hard. I get it. It's... I do a podcast. You do a oh, podcast. I, 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 I thought you did a great job with that one. That was a, that was a great title. <laughs> it was so great. We gave it a, its own title. Slam yeah. And gold. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to go back to improv is hard, but it's okay. I, <laughs> <laughs> as long as we're giving out participation awards, it's, it's <laughs> the participation trophies. <laughs> yes. For, 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 for renaming uh, challenges that already have names, which is called playing dirty. So, Derek, I love you. You know, I do. So, um, yeah, so uh, the ladies go first. Veronica, last place on uh, round one. And uh, we have here, uh, uh, during during the, the ladies' uh, segment of the challenge, Dandy Warhols, we used to be friends. Mm -hmm. yep. So Kendall and Kellyanne, oh, I sorry, um, are uh, none too happy with people that they thought they were, were their friends when the Treehouse Alliance is on full... <laughs> <laughs> attack mode so um is it obvious that there's a treehouse alliance <laughs> well <laughs> so, like and, i said these these people aren't dumb was derek wearing a wig in this challenge <laughs> 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 and didn't get last place which is so amazing <laughs> Uh, no, Derek would Derek would accidentally win, and it would <laughs> it would be revealed that he was uh, he was playing. So, uh, uh, was it? All right, our winners for uh, was it Kaylee? Uh, Kayla, Kayla won. Uh, Kayla, sorry, Kayla. Different show, different show, Johnny. Yes, sorry. <laughs> Kay Kayla wins. John A second, Sylvia third, and uh, and then um, our next round. Tina tackles Kellyanne. <laughs> wow. Tina's not uh, messing around. Like, she goes all in for stuff. Yeah. But this is not without repercussion. Why? Her knuckle comes out. She looks for her knuckle. She's missing one. Pushes it back in. She's like, ah. She finds it and puts it back. <laughs> yeah. So, um, for someone that made TMZ for a, a similar kickball injury, I, uh, Tina, I can relate. It sucks. So, uh, yeah, you I didn't see her going in kickball. kickball. I called a. Uh, I was playing in. I was right, playing. You catch in. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah, was yeah, playing. Right. I was playing shortstop or third or shortstop or second base. One of those. I'm not sure which one's which. Uh, sports ball. It's fine. And um, very much. I'm, I'm very much team sports ball. Right? Yes. I'm like, well, how does I am ball? normally hidden in right field. You know where the you know the. The least damage I can do uh, to right, the yeah. team. So as far as kicking in kickball and and like uh, I'm pretty yeah. good. So catching, not I'm not a good catcher. So uh, you, you so and anyway. I should never be on a team together because we would literally we'd torpedo it. Like well, we get we get sub out as, as long as there's extra people. Uh, we yeah. can ne we, yeah never on the field. We'll, be, at the same we'll time. be over. We'll be over at the bar when the game's done. Yeah, ne never on the field at the same time. But otherwise, yes, we we'd be fine. Yeah. So uh, so anyway, I was playing infield. We were we were short players. I was just like, oh man, you we're really short players. <laughs> so uh, so I'm playing and a. Lar like uh we were playing like a college athlete and he's like 280 300 pounds maybe and he kicks it straight up and they're like fair play you got this is easy and i'm like no it's not <laughs> and so it's in the air forever and i catch it and i go 
I can't Holy believe shit, I, I did it. And then you look down, and there's nothing but blood. This is, but no, like I'm fine. Like this is the greatest. So, so I'm there, and so kickball rules. He can run through you, and if he knocks it out of your hand, he's safe, and he does. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh man, that sucked. But then I look, and my my this finger right here is going the opposite way. And I was like, oh, that's not right. So I, I push it back up and it goes back down. I'm like, oh, oh no, 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 let's, no, 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 oh, go, no. Go, go back, go back up. So, and uh, so, yeah, actually, I think it was my middle finger. So anyway, so uh, um, yeah, that my, my broken. I mean, that finger, your, your middle, that could have been a career ender for you. Oh, yeah, finger. right. <laughs> so anyway, this makes TMZ. So I'm, I'm glad you got it fixed though. <laughs> yeah, well, the crazy, so uh, I, this was many, many moons ago. I, I was, I was shockingly at the time drinking moonshine and so i call my uh my doctor who's a friend of mine i'm just like hey i just broke my finger like you know it went all the way back uh i've been drinking moonshine what do i do and this is you know like nine o'clock at night and he goes keep drinking moonshine do not waste your time at the emergency room uh put some popsicle sticks and tape on it and first thing in the morning go to your uh fingers toes doctor or whatever just be there in the parking lot and and talk to them and so uh, i do and i explain to the doctor what my doctor told me and he goes tell your friend thank you that's the correct advice <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, hey who knew yeah. so um so yes so the the uh um this is now time uh now time for the guys and here's where we see Veronica saying nice tank top. And uh, it's time for Christina Aguilera with Red Three. Man. Reggie Noble. Oh, yeah, Red Man. Well, so interestingly, it was it was a tough decision between that and just or just using Red Man's. Um, but uh, this is where, you know, one of those situations, one of the things I do love about this show is that uh, it is such a collaborative effort. And credit where it's due are... Uh, one of our producers, Chris, actually, uh, day one of working on this episode, basically told me this song is going in this, is this it. episode. This is this song is going in. And I'm like, yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, it was definitely his. He was definitely the uh, the champion of it. And, you know, it's I, I am happy to, you know, I'll credit where it's due there because honestly it was just it was just tremendous you know it was a, a great moment you know we loved we loved working with it do you ever do you ever do like a bar trivia oh yeah i love trivia um okay. during i mean during the pandemic my friends and i would every because it all moved online uh yeah, yeah. So my friends and i would do like weekly trivia where we'd have like our google meets up and then we'd have trivia on the screen and and uh you know there are the prizes were their raffles because obviously they can't proctor you cheating but yeah i'm a big trivia guy yeah, so I, uh, I, I like every other Monday I, I do trivia and, and then sometimes on Thursdays just based on schedule. Everything's about to open up. Like I, I got one more week, guys. You want to see Johnny Fairplay for the for the last time until September next week for the finale of Survivor season forty two. I'm gonna be in Hamilton, Ohio, at the Pinball Garage for the Survivor viewing party. It's next Wednesday night, May twenty fifth. Free admission, giving away autograph picks from 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 some of your favorite survivors. Given. Also giving away a season 42 buff signed by a final five castaway. Does this person win? I don't fucking know. However, it's signed by this person. I'm giving it away. Come to Pinball Garage next Wednesday night, 7 p.m. It starts. Uh, we're, we're doing trivia throughout the night. And the, the show starts at 8. And then we're going to have the finale and the, and the live special. So excited. Uh, come to Pinball Garage in Hamilton, Ohio, right outside Cincinnati. And then the next day at 12.35 p.m., Cincinnati Reds versus the uh, Chicago Cubs. Johnny Fairplay is throwing out the first pitch. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> What the that's fuck? <laughs> is that crazy? <sighs> so uh, anyway, where was – oh, uh, oh, getting back to trivia. So, uh, so I will be doing trivia. My trivia team name, always, Quiz Tina Aguilera. I love it. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Shirts available at johnnyfairplay.com. It's got Chris, uh, Christina's face with a trivial uh, trivial pursuit pieces for her eyes. That's really great. <laughs> so feel free to steal that anyone unless you're playing me and then that's stupid. So and if you don't like that, this, these are usually the people that we play against. But uh, I think it's a good name. Trivia Newton John. Oh, that's great, too. Wow. I know. I don't I gotta, have that. I got to really step up my name game. I know. But Phil, as I said, steal Christina Aguilera. 
I may, I may. I mean, honestly, I'm I'm horrible at coming up with with great names. Uh, I usually put my focus on like winning. Oh no! Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but but when it comes to the name, like I I'm like whatever you guys want. Like I my my ideas are all stupid. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Go to johnnyfearplay.com. Get get yourself get shirts for I have them available in purple and black. Nice. So there you go. All right. Um, let's see. So it's uh, we got dirty. MJ is out first, and uh, the next heat it is hotly contested between Nehemiah and Yes, and uh, because Yes decides to run over Nehemiah, and Nehemiah says he's going to beat Yes's ass if he comes at him again. And I'm like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> there is some serious shit talking here. Yeah, it's the, the good natured fun of All Stars has been turned on its head. I, d- I don't think there was good natured fun. I mean, like my girlfriend's watching. She's like, because Nehemiah is a friend of mine. Yes, yes is yes is a much newer friend of mine, but 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 a friend nonetheless. And I'm I'm just like these are two good dudes. And yes, it's you know it's a competition, but you know it's you're playing a game. Yeah. So what was yes? You are you're playing do? a game, but you have to remember that in the heat of the moment, in the mud pit emotions come out lauren are you are you cool with this uh this nehemiah reaction oh yeah i'm cool with it because honestly like he's there to compete you know got taken out and yes got the best of him in that situation and hopefully we're gonna see some more of them like intermingling and and different challenges thus we got we got seven more episodes together this time He, he knows that so yes has two enemies now this guy flew under the radar the entire season one of all stars. Well, you can't now because he was the winner. So obviously he comes in with a huge target on his back. So he might as well go guns a blazing. Oh, because some assholes presented them as and and, and the uh, winner's limo uh, to be presented. <laughs> 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 Gave him special music and everything. <laughs> uh oh. All right. Hold on. Sam, did you hear about the challenge 38? Uh, I, I, you know what? I heard a rumor about thirty eight at the uh, at the at the party, and uh, I'm not discussing it. <laughs> I was uh, someone asked if I would do the chat here, folks. Let's just squash this once and for fucking all, okay? I go do the challenge, like the you know the MTV challenge. Okay, say I go. Number one, I'm the first fucking target. I'm the. If you're not getting rid of me, you're a fucking idiot. You're gonna get rid of me. Okay, I'm stealing your fucking airtime. I'm fucking I'm, I'm I'm an easy fucking win in the arena. Like uh, I got 8000 reasons to get get rid of me on the challenge, not at uh, not on Survivor, but but on the challenge on the, on the regular MTV challenge there. I'm, I'm going to the arena first. I go into the arena. A, I don't win. I don't care what the fuck it is. I don't win. If they can put me in the in the female version, I don't win against anyone in the MTV challenge. And B, I could get hurt. So let's see. At the end of the day, I'm fucking first boot. I get hurt. I don't win. What does it do for my brand, my legacy, anything? Nothing. I'm not going on the fucking challenge. Are we good? Thanks. <laughs> Squashed forever. <Yeah>. Please. <laughs> so. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> I mean, I just, I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm made for Survivor. That's what I'm made for. I ain't made for the challenge. I, I like, like if you meet me and then meet anyone ever that's ever played the challenge, you go, oh wow, Johnny's not made for that. <laughs> so, yes, we're a different breed. Would you ever do Big Brother? No, because it's too long. Yeah, I would do Celebrity Big celebrity. Brother. Celebrity. Yeah, Celebrity. Yeah, regular. No, that's three months. I don't. I. I have. Z, I don't. I don't want to go anywhere for three months. That's fair. Like like a fuck like like a five star resort at Key West or or Jamaica or whatever. Don't want to do that. I don't want to go anywhere for three months. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. So I mean, I just that ain't that ain't that ain't me. So. All right. So um, uh, it's so it, it's for to see who uh as becomes the authority and wins. Brad wins. Then Derek photo finish. Huh. And uh, and then Jordan, uh, who with with uh, despite having uh, uh, slippery fingers, uh, gets the ball across, and um, we get uh, during this soul survivor a little young Jeezy. Am I right on that? Yeah. All mm-hmm. right. I thought I thought young I would Jeezy have Akon, young right? Jeezy. What's that? 
uh, is that Young Jeezy and Akon? No, it's, yes. yeah, it's featuring Akon. Yep. Yep. So I did. Uh, I thought I would have that in my in my like. So underneath this pool table right here is and and underneath those pinball tables are two thousand twelve inch singles, and I thought that would be in one of them. And oh, wow. if it is. I couldn't find it. <laughs> so so we're not there yet. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, yes. So um, Johnny is not happy, but uh, we'll discuss that. Who? Right after this break. We're all trying to eat better, but healthy breakfast doesn't have to be boring. Magic Spoon has the amazing flavors you love, but without all the bad stuff. And it's amazing as a midnight snack right before bed. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. That's only 140 calories per serving. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. And build your own box. Available flavors to build your very own custom bundle are cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, cinnamon, cookies and cream, and my favorite, maple waffle. Now, Magic Spoon recently brought back their two super popular flavors, cookies and cream and maple waffle. Thank goodness. But they're back permanently. And when these flavors were first introduced for a limited time, they sold out extremely quickly. Now, I'm here to let you know you can get them again or try them for the first time. Why? Because they're delicious and indulgent. Johnny, Magic Spoon has so many great flavors that I really enjoy, and even my kids enjoy them. We have the cocoa, fruity frosted, peanut butter. All these are really great combinations. They enjoy waking up in the morning and getting some Magic Spoon right off to start their day great before they head off to school. I think everybody listening should give Magic Spoon a try. Or if you've tried them already, it's time to reorder. Let's get you some more Magic Spoon and uh, get your day started right. Hey, when I finish a podcast late at night, the first thing I'm thinking is not sleep. It's let me grab a delicious bowl of Magic Spoon before I go to bed. So go to magicspoon.com forward slash survivor to grab a custom bundle of cereal and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code survivor at checkout to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash survivor and use the code SURVIVOR to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this podcast. Thanks for sticking with us through the ad break. Don't forget, for more exclusive Reality NSFW content, visit adfreensfw.com. This episode of Reality NSFW is sponsored by Blue Chew. Say it with us, Blue Chew. Blue Chew is making waves and bringing more confidence to the bedroom by offering chewable tablets that can help men get stronger and longer lasting erections. That's right, we're giving away super hard dicks. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. Blue Chew's tablets help men achieve harder, stronger erections to combat all forms of ED. Blue Chew is an online prescription service, so no visits to the doctor offices, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And it ships right to your door in a discreet package. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. And the best part, it's all done online. BlueChew's licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredient and strength for your prescription. Don't like swallowing pills? No problem here. BlueChew's Sildenafil and Tadalafil tablets are chewable. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and they prepare and ship direct, so it's cheaper than a pharmacy. Hey, if you're looking to give that immunity idol to someone or you don't want to be voted out of a crater, don't worry, Blue Chew's got you covered. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use promo code SURVIVOR at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. 
That's Blue Chew, B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W.com, promo code SURVIVOR to receive your first month free. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Thanks, Blue Chew. I, uh, I owe you my life. All right, with that, it's time for the disco party. And when you're at a, at a disco party, what do you do? You shake your groove thing. You just <laughs> nerve. <laughs> I felt this is, this is lo- low hanging fruit, Pete. <laughs> what? This well, is low. I mean, look, what would, what would you have gone with? That. The disco party. <laughs> <laughs> she grooved that. I mean, like it wrote itself. You know, there, there's a lot of a lot of places where it's like, you know, the world is your oyster on, on what you're placing, and then you you have a '70s party, and and they're dancing, and they're dressed up, and it's like you go with you go with what they give you. <laughs> yes, yes. So, is there? I don't, I don't. Maybe you can answer this. Maybe you can't. Is there actually music playing that we don't hear? And like, so like, like when they're coming down the stairs, like, is there music playing when they're coming down the stairs for their intros? Yeah, they're, they're listening. They're listening to like you. You mean in the house? For yeah. The parties. Yeah, they've got music. Yeah, but like, like for the intros, or is it, or is it silent to make it easier for you guys for 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 like stuff like this? Oh, they're listening to music, but okay. um, you know, it's it's just, it's at a reasonable level so that we can still do our thing because if even if it was like okay we had everything you know they're cleared the fact of the matter is is when we're, we're montaging it the music would go yeah. like, it, 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 it. Yeah. um so yeah you know they've got music it's it's just at a reasonable level so that we can you know, we can make a television show okay okay yeah. so just so wasn't sure if you could answer that so but uh, yeah. mm-hmm. excellent choice excellent chess so uh, uh everyone's having fun it's all about just partying and dancing it's not about politics but uh but wes is here so. but also it is <laughs> <laughs> so, so well wes makes it definitely about politicking and uh he goes up to jordan uh who was uh uh Wes's initial target, but apparently Jordan doesn't know this, and so, so Jordan wants to put in yes, and uh, Jordan is for it. So, in, in spite of his his vote uh, in the in the authority later, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Jordan wants no blood on his hands, as, as we discover from the authority meeting. <laughs> I'm, we'll just I'm, throw in, throw in the votes. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I'm, I'm nominating. Uh, uh, was it Naya? Nia, Naya, Naya, who was not even relevant in this episode. Yes, all. and uh, and Derek, I believe, <laughs> or Nehemiah. I can't. No, remember. Nehemiah. Yep. Nehemiah. Yes. So no. All right. So uh, uh, Jordan is for it, and I'm like, oh no, Jordan, don't make me hate you. I mean, I don't like your haircut, but now you're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> for the record, I, I spent a lot of my childhood with a mullet, so I get. It, and at one time, I literally permed it. Which why I don't know. Because is it my hair curly enough? But I literally had a perm mullet at one time. So, <laughs> um, and then it's time for the ladies to decide uh, who to go against Veronica and whatever Ver- Veronica wants because the treehouse is calling the shots. I'm like, okay. So Wes then asks John A for yes. And I'm like, ooh, let's see where this goes. And then we learn that Cyrus is MJ's choice. And that is a strong possibility. So, uh, so. Episode one, we saw a very diplomatic way of doing the uh, of, of who's nominated. That shit has gone out the window so fucking fast. I was going to say, you you knew that was going to last all, all all season long. Of course they were just going to do yeah. that. Yeah, the only one that, 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 that got fucked by that was yes thus far is, what, is all I'm really <laughs> <laughs> So, so, so do you think that was that? Do you, do you think that was ever supposed to be the plan beyond episode one? <laughs> uh, according to yes, yes. But according well, to everyone else, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> So that's where the the yeses need to need to work a little different. All right, so uh, we then learn that Brad wants yes, and I'm just like, uh, yeah, I get that. Uh, and he is attempting to discuss this with Derek, but Derek is more interested in the red glasses because looking through life through rose rose colored glasses makes life better. His reaction when he put those glasses on, I, it was just a lot. I don't know if it like changed. I don't know how much how it changed the vision that much, but he just put them on. Was like. Ooh! Have you ever have you ever put on red color red red lens glasses? I have not. But it's, it's a big difference. Like a huge, huge difference. Huge, yeah. huge difference. Why? That's why the saying exists. Yeah, rose colored glasses is a saying for a reason. But like he acted like he had never put them on before, and I figured he probably did. I don't think he has. So, well, or, or if he had, he just remembered the experience being so wonderful. He was like, "I want to relive it." 
And he gave probably the same reaction that he just maybe gave. he had rose colored glasses about the experience. And yeah, so so yeah, so uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, we then learn that uh, Tina's injury was a little more than we thought, and uh, there's only one way to go out if that's the case. How am I supposed to live without you, Michael Bolton? Thank you, Pete. And no, I Tina, do not have this on vinyl. <laughs> I, I have to say, Tina. Tina has been, you know, definitely a, a joy to to score things to. Um, I'm sure. Last season, simply red. If you don't know me by now, um, I mean, she's just such a she. She puts herself out there, and she she makes my job easy because it's like who who better to to, to send off with these just amazing ballads than Tina. <laughs> I love her so much. I, I, I like. She's great. I don't, she can, she can leave early every season. I don't care. Just put her on every season. And if she makes it to the end and wins, even better. But I'll take any Tina allotted. Yeah. So, and, and, and hopefully casting agrees. So, um, so it's time for the authority meet, uh, the authority meeting and uh, Cyrus is going in. Kendall's going in and uh, according to Cyrus seemed pretty intense, you know, based on Derek's reaction, explaining everything to him. And then we see the actual footage. Not so much. (laughs) (laughs) Derek, God bless you for playing the game (laughs) because you, you snowed over your buddy. (laughs) It's just like, Oh man, you don't understand. (laughs) It was a tough decision. And then clip to the tape. No, not really. Yep. Yep. So, um, yeah, so Kendall's going in and Kendall's like, hey, guys, I don't think you understand. I left my family to be here. Kendall, I don't think you understand. Everyone left their family to be there. Just throwing it out there. So Nobody, I, I, nobody brought their families to Panama. Yeah. So, I mean, I get it. She has more family than most. So, but we're not talking a bunch of 20 year olds with no fucking life that do this professionally as the, as the MTV challenge. We're talking, you know, what 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 was our ages? Twenty nine to fifty two. Twenty nine yeah. to fifty two is the age Kayla's the youngest. Kayla's twenty nine. Yeah. Yep. So I'm pretty sure Kayla has some shit going on in her life. I mean, Kayla literally got married after this. Yeah. So, so I mean, like, yeah. like she flew, from, she flew she flew from the UK. Yeah. So I mean, like, I I understand that you know you you have three kids. They you know they potentially don't. You know you might have a better job. I don't I don't know what you do for a living. So, but as I said, this isn't like like watching like uh, uh I think Spies, Lies, and Allies episode zero. You had Amber M. I believe talking. It's just like you know they're like uh she's like she's asking people like what do you do for a living and they're like girl uh the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> like that's at, 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 at the same time, though, you know, we, we have to admire that she's, you know, willing to put her heart out there and basically express her her feelings on on it. You know, like it it's really great that, you know, like it just comes back to one reason why we all love these people on these shows is they they put their whole selves out there. You know, yeah. she just kind of like shrugged off. She's like, OK, fine, whatever. Like, you know, like that's that's boring. And, and I really appreciate that she does, you know, play, plays with her whole heart and puts it out there. I, I like that too, but at the same time, like I, I don't like. As I said, like if this was the MTV, just the regular MTV challenge, like as I said, a lot of these, this is what they do. So this is not what these people do. Like, like you know, a lot of these people have waited. There 19, is, there is like, less throwing of pizza on ours. There is. Well, <laughs> the, the, I mean, uh, there's the pizza pita that got involved uh, right before. Oh, the, the Greeks. <laughs> okay, uh, going back to the question. <laughs> Going back to the question, um, my favorite moment that I've scored uh, with, with score was uh, Salad Gate. Oh, <laughs> there yes. you go. I just have to bring it back to Salad Gate. Like when we when we started working on that, it was it was a moment in our in our meeting where we were all just like, "What a gift!" <laughs> like elimination is a gift, but also Salad Gate is a gift. Yes, yes. And so and just, when we that was just so much fun. And when we interviewed uh, Ayana, I I literally started the interview by eating a salad <laughs> and and made her wait while <laughs> I, I <laughs> ate a sandwich a salad with my hands. That was amazing. <laughs> so, all right, Andrea S. Thank you. I did, I was not aware of this. Uh, guys, Kendall quit her job uh, as a nurse to do all stars two and three, and is now bald dealing with an undisclosed. Well, I, she wasn't bald when she did this. I, I did see she was bald, and I think she's bald and beautiful. So. And uh, uh, Kayla travels the world as a social media influence. Okay, well, 
once again, other people have jobs and families. So, and you know, congrats to Kayla for being a social media influencer, but she also, you know, left to go get married afterwards. So there, and reg is, regardless, regardless of, of what you have going on, it's always a bummer when, when everyone, you know, says you're, you're going in, you know? Yeah. So yeah, everyone's feelings are valid. Yes. I, that's, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So, um, so, uh, next, uh, Jimmy's mom uh, reaches out to, uh, I guess, you know, Murray. And as a result, uh, there's a video conference and we, uh, is revealed her dad is not doing well and she's going home and good on her. I will say this. I have been told by every family member, including the dead grandma, that if there's ever a health crisis in my family, that they will not tell anyone. And if anyone were to find out and let me know, it doesn't matter. Do not leave. <laughs> Get your money because there is nothing in the will. They promised me. So <laughs> I will you I will you to stay and try to make and try to make get your own bootstraps. Yeah. So I, I, I will you to get the inheritance that you think you're gonna get that you're really not gonna get, and I promise you. So please stay. Yeah. So so yes. So but uh yeah, that no, that that uh that sucked because I uh, Jimmy's so fun. I mean, mm -hmm. like uh she no. she's a confessional queen, and uh I I really felt we didn't get uh what we were owed from from her this season. But once again, bring her back. It's a, it's okay. No, no one's mad. So, you know, we, we get it. We understand, you know, her family is much closer than mine in every way I'm sure. So, so, so bring Jimmy back. So, uh, so it's time for the, uh, the arena Kendall Veronica off the hook. So we had two yep. girls gone. So y'all ain't got to fight. So, uh, but that does not stop John A being nervous for MJ. Hmm. Uh, so the challenge of the elimination is wait up and, uh, it's, uh, you're, you're in a cell. You have to throw sandbags into a weighted device. And once they're enough, go in, uh, a, a wall is exposed that you take a hammer to, to, uh, to break through in, in some way. And we learn right here that MJ is a general contractor and might have the advantage. And I'm just like, Pete, there's only one song that can be played right here. And if you don't do it, we're no longer friends. You're not on the podcast. And there but, it oh, is. No. There it is. <laughs> oh, but wait. Original pressing. Red. Oh, wow. Vinyl. Wow. It's a beauty. So uh, my, uh, a fan, Corey Tugwell, sent me this. As a guest. Awesome. So that's a so huge yes. one. So yeah. yeah, it's um interestingly, uh there were uh last season, um episode nine, I think, when they did the um the wrecking house one, we called the episode break stuff. Uh I have no control over the episode titles. Uh so people would be expecting the song only to not find the song and be like, Where's the song? And yes. it's like oh, it'll come at the appropriate place. Right now yes. you're getting walking on broken glass. Yes. So I, I was uh, I was expecting that last go round. I did not get it based on the episode title. But as I said, that you know they they fucked that up. Not you. But here you are. Here you are. How? I mean, if of all my this is one of my this is this is a prize piece. Yeah. Original pressing limp biscuit, limp biscuit significant other. That's that's uh that that's one of my one of my I'm, white I'm whales. just happy to be of, of service in you showing off your your limited edition uh, vinyl. Yeah. Did you so here that's the uh the the my record crate. Is that a stand up of Jeff Probst? Yes, you see his penis. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being there for that. <laughs> his penis is drawn on. <laughs> oh gosh. It's to scale. It's very large. <laughs> Do you ever see that nude pic of uh Jeff? Do a do a Google search. Who are you asking? Yeah, I was like, who are you asking? Both of you, I guess. Do it do do a Google search, Jeff Probst nude. Oh, so apparently I'm like good. uh he was changing for I'm like good. a TV show or something, like war some some wardrobe lady took a picture. Jeff is hung. Good on you, Jeff. So uh, yeah. I'll uh I'll pass. All right, just, I will also say, I'll take your word. Pass oh, well. it's impressive. That you I, you know how many people right now are pausing this podcast. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so unless they're listening, they're like, oh, I can, I can still listen and look. It's fine. So yeah, get on Jeff. So uh, yeah, break stuff. Uh, uh, Limp Biscuit. It's the edited version. W- what's the call there? Was that was that a was that a network decision? We always use the edited versions because okay. this has to if if they want to. You know, last season they actually previewed they showed an episode on MTV, and eventually, you know, if they if they want to make that call, they need to like we would have to do multiple versions of it if okay. that were the case. And so it's we just go with the edited because we want to make it work for everyone. Okay. So, so on the show, I mean, like, like, you know, they'll, if, if it goes into syndication elsewhere, or whatever, they, they can bleep what they need to bleep that people say, but it's, it would be a huge pain in the ass. Yeah. It's a different thing bleep. entirely to, to do a bleep, to do a bleep track on the dialogue, but yeah. doing it with the music is just so jarring and nightmare. terrible and, and a nightmare. And so we yeah. don't, we just don't screw with it. I've never noticed it until this song. No. Yeah. Takes, it takes a special edition vinyl version uh, of yours to to notice, but uh, yeah, and I, yeah. I and I really don't think it it you know like we there's enough there's enough cursing on the show from the from the yeah. cast. Oh, we Cyrus, don't, we don't need it in the music too. Cyrus, Cyrus, and LT alone, we're good. Oh yeah, <laughs> which I mean, one, one of the, one of the things I love the the fan reaction is basically like it's so refreshing to hear them like say like fucking shit and both like with, without censorship, and I'm like. It, I I figured it'd be you know like oh all these people are back and it's like well yeah that's cool but like hearing them curse is awesome yeah <laughs> it's like it's like my everyone's inner twelve year old is come is like reemerging along with all of their their that's like, where I'm at growing up yeah yeah I'm right there like I'm just, I'm just like like the first episode of of All Stars One I'm just like holy shit they're saying cuss words this is my favorite thing ever mm-hmm. so, which I don't yeah, think I, anyone anyone was expecting when you know like oh they're doing a, an All Stars version oh well. You hear the first one; it's it's jarring because you're you're not used to hear. It. You're like, wait, this isn't FX after 10 p.m. What, yeah. What's going on? So no, I, I uh, on my first season of Survivor, uh, Mark Burnett goes, he goes, when you're out here, you fucking be yourself. You fucking talk like you fucking talk, and I'm just like, all right, cool. And so I'm just like, fuck this, fuck that, blah blah blah. And so like day two, they're like, you're not going to be on the show. <laughs> like we cannot show a single thing from day one from you. And I'm like, well, Mark said, they're like, yeah, Mark said no. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, Mark right. said, but we're the ones who actually put the show together. So we're, we're the ones who get to deal with the, you know, like the, the levels. So like Mark, you can listen to Mark all you want. What we're yeah. saying is. Yeah. If, if you'd like to be on the actual show that we're, we're, we're putting on C- CBS. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so, so anyway, so uh, it, it comes down to why MJ barely wins. And uh, it was cl- I, I liked how they did it because like, and, and of course, I was rooting for Cyrus. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, it was it was it was close. If uh, if if Cyrus had figured out that the swaying uh, the swaying bucket when he's throwing the sandbags, I don't think it would have been as close. I think Cyrus would have won. And yep. uh, Cyrus, God bless you. You're looking good, brother. The best Cyrus has probably ever looked in a challenge. TJ gives him props as as deserved. It was really fucking awesome. Yeah. You know, so I was definitely one of the greats and and this is just such a fun one to watch uh it was just for me what I loved is just seeing their their different techniques and and you know just I just like I'm gonna destroy this motherfucker and MJ taking I guess you'd call it the jo- the Jordan tug of war approach where it's like I know I don't have the raw strength but what I do know is I can essentially perforate and then just do one big shove yeah uh but it was just a fun one it's a fun one it's always just fun to see the different strategies that that different people do and how they they tackle things and how how that turns out so uh so next week it looks as though a sub comes in we we lost one too many females uh oh Uh -oh. but does it matter because then we see an ambulance and i don't know if it's for a guy or girl (laughs) (laughs) but uh oh so uh so yeah, so uh, a couple questions from uh, from from uh, the, the the comments here. Uh, Christy, uh, does Pete work for BMP? The answer is yes. <laughs> so uh, they I mean they they worship him. I mean uh, they <laughs> he has a, a corner office, ton of windows, uh, top floor. 
pretty uh pretty good stuff <laughs> so is that a nice way of saying tent on the route no uh <laughs> no i uh i do and, and honestly i i really do have to give a huge shout out to our our team on the show our, our editors our producers um our music team um uh it really is a, a group effort and like the best thing about the show is like it was you know born out of all of us just being in our home you know pandemic and, and all this and it really was a great way to kind of get through that and you know we just i have some of the greatest coworkers in the world who work on the show and so huge shout out to them uh for for everything they do i think they're okay pete oh, i thanks, think you're chris. the man and as christy says i worship him and christy i'm right there with you i worship pete as well <laughs> and uh i don't know if you can answer this we'll see maybe there's something you can say uh can pete give us any clues about the season coming up what season's coming up i don't know what season's coming I, up i wish i you know as much like, honestly you you probably know more than i do yeah like, I, probably you know, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 like, I'm, for... I'm the i'm the all-stars guy i when it comes to like i actually i'm a huge fan of i i call it the mothership um but i watch the mothership the same time everyone else watches the mothership i specifically like i'm like nope don't don't tell me anything like the our supervisors on on that show i'm like don't tell me anything that happens they've been very yeah. good at keeping keeping me spoiler free because I don't like spoilers. Uh, so yeah. I find out everything about the regular show when the normal viewers do. I try to stay away from spoilers online too because, you know, there's no it fun in it. It just it. Yeah. yeah. As I said, so, like, new, new Star know, Wars it, comes out, new Spider or new, new Marvel, whatever. First yeah. night, I don't, I don't want it ruined. So, and you same know, with... to, to the point where if, if I can hear something in the office, uh, you know, when I, when I, in the office, if I hear something in the vents, I will go take a break and do something until they've moved on just because I don't want to hear it. Boom. There you go. So we're yeah. on the same page. So wish I could help you out, Chris, on that, but uh, you know, you probably know more than I do. So probably. Yeah. Go 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 on Twitter and, and look at everyone I have blocked or muted. Uh for you the, will find for the it next, on Twitter. For, for the next yeah. uh four years and then I'll mm -hmm. unblock them and I'll I'll catch up on a lot of shit I didn't know. <laughs> so, yeah. so so with that, Pete, thank you so much. Is there anything you want to plug? Um, yeah, as a matter of fact, um, a little treat here. Um, uh -oh. one of our composers was kind enough to, uh, put together a playlist of the score that, uh, his team wrote for our show. Uh, so it's in the, uh, uh I put it in the private chat here. Okay. Uh, I can share if you it. you want to share it to the comments. Um, uh, copy. but yeah, so if you ever find yourself at the gym and, and you want to, you want to, you know, find that like you know, walk into daily challenge music or, or, you know, anything like that. There it is. Uh, something a little unique and different. Um, Cause honestly, you know, like the score is, is not the necessarily like, okay, it's not the, the big songs everyone knows, but the score drives the show and we, our composers just do an amazing job of, of, you know, getting us great stuff and unique stuff that really makes the show special. So uh, there you have it. <laughs> I am actually, so I put it, I, I just put it on there. I'm also, if you're looking at the description for, uh, uh, for this episode on YouTube, you will see the, uh, the link there. So, uh, adding it right now. So it'll be right there in the, uh, uh, in the description. So that's so cool of you guys to, to, uh, to add that. Thank you. Yeah. So, all right. So, uh, with that, Pete, you rock, man. I've been waiting like this I mean, took three. This, this has been an absolute seasons. pleasure. I'm so I'm so happy to to have been able to join you all and, and chat with you, you know, about about the show and what we do, and and just in general, you know. And thank you, like I said, thank you guys for just doing a, a entertaining and fun podcast to to watch and listen to. You've gotten me through many a paperwork day. <laughs> You'll get me through many many a more. <laughs> They're still coming. Yeah. So, uh, so with that, uh, uh, thank you, Lauren. Uh, thank you, Pete. Thank you for, uh, to, to, uh, to all of our, uh, listeners and viewers click the subscribe button. Um, you know, uh, become a patron. It's the best way to support the podcast. Go to uh, ad free NSFW.com. If you want some crazy stories, uh, Holy moly. Uh, uh, Wednesday night was insanity. I had Zane Knight. uh, uh, he stole a sign from a bar. He stole M and M's from the hotel. He threw up, and uh, like, uh, uh, there's so many. And I found out how he got voted out uh, first boot. And uh, you will not believe that story. So uh, yeah, become a patron right now. Ad free NSFW.com. Everyone, 
Thank you so much. You're the best. This is why I do this. Thank you. And for more reality NSFW content, visit adfreenSFW.com.